Salad Fingers was probably the first big creepy web series. It pretty much paved the path for all things creepy on YouTube. People debated about the story and deeper meaning for years after. Creator David Firth has continued making videos and animations, with his work just getting better and better. One of his series he started shortly after the first Salad Fingers was entitled Sock. This series being an anthology series focused around the idea of dreams. The animations are amazing pieces of art, but do they hold some kind of deeper meaning? Let's take a deep dive into the latest one. And now that I have your attention, I'll begin. The video starts off in a room with our main character, whose name is never said in the video, but on Instagram, the creator released that his name was Nigel. In this room is also a faceless head and a hole in the wall. Nigel tells the faceless head that he's hungry, to which the head responds to ask Alan. You had best speak with Alan. Excuse me, Alan. Don't look directly into Alan. I'm sorry to bother you, Alan, but I'd really like something to eat. No request. You get what you are given. While Nigel is enjoying his mouth that Alan gave him, a woman sits down next to him. The woman explains that she chose to sit there because it's the only chair where someone hasn't died, and that she's been counting the people that have been dying. The interesting thing to note here is when she speaks, there are subtitles, which hadn't happened for any of the other characters up to this point. I hope you don't mind me sitting here. I'd choose another seat. That this is the only one nobody has died in. Oh yeah? How would you know? Because I remember things like that. I count them. I'm counting you right now. How many of me in total? Just one. You'll always be just one. Is this going to be an issue? Whilst talking, she falls out of her chair and appears to die, although the faceless head is quick to inform Nigel that this is just an act and that it's part of her scam. Alan then says, leave her to me, and swallows her. Then after, out of Alan comes two identical people. They go to Nigel and insist that he follows them to the car. We then see Nigel sitting in the car next to what seems to be a cow and a large man. The cow proceeds to steal the mouth from Nigel. Is this mine now? Well, you know, you can, uh, you could probably have it if you wanted to. I said, is this mine? Yeah, I, I mean, uh, I suppose it is. Tell your mum her items are shit. I'll try to remember. Don't you fucking get fresh with me. Finally, the car arrives at its destination, which appears to be a barren field with burning people. The twins leave the car and begin to burn like the rest of the bodies. After some disturbing imagery, we get this conversation with Nigel and the cow. You shouldn't be looking at stuff like that. Craig? That's a strange name for a cow, isn't it? Did you used to be a man? No. My mother was Jewish. She didn't name me properly. Well, I think she did just fine. May we have permission? Meh. <coughs> 
After some unspeakable actions happen with Craig and Nigel, they get back in the car, and this time Craig seems to have Alan, or something that looks like Alan, on the side of her head. The side pockets then proceed to fill up with what looks like guts and blood. Don't give a fuck. That might be human. After being parked and out of the car, Nigel seems to have collected some rocks and set them in a certain order. <laughs> choose one. <laughs> For what? <laughs> Just choose one. See if you get it right. One, two, three, five, or six. <laughs> Four. Four? That one's four. Uh-huh, and that's the one I choose. <laughs> okay. After killing Craig and laughing about it, the police show up and arrest Nigel for killing Craig. When taken to his prison cell, we see that there is another thing that is Alan, or looks like Alan, on the roof. Nigel curls up and sits under the toilet. A woman comes in and sits down while Nigel pulls out a list of questions to ask about her bowel movements. He then offers for her mother to be there when he gives her her results. Instead, she wants her sister, which ends up being the woman from the beginning that died, which we can tell because they both speak in subtitles, and they have the same voice. Jeremy, stop it! Stop it, Jeremy! No, Sue, it's me, Carol. You're only Jeremy when it suits you. Never time to look for others in your pursuit. I'm Carol today, Sue, and that's all that matters. I'll read the results. I don't need to hear the results. You're still my little sister, however well you did. But I wish you'd leave Jeremy behind. It's not that simple, Sue. The results were 100% negative, and nothing out of the ordinary was detected. So that's some good news, isn't it? The video ends here, leaving most viewers disturbed and curious. So the big question is, what does this all mean? Is this just a strange animation with no direction, or is there actually a coherent story here with a deeper meaning? Something noticeable about the entire video is the lack of identity that all the characters seem to have. You see this with Craig hating her own name and the debate about the woman's name in the end. There's a clear confusion about people's identity throughout this entire video. Looking at the identity issues alone doesn't give us anything, but when we put them next to everything else in the video, it starts to make more sense. Carol tells Sue, I'm Carol today, Sue. That's all that matters. The interesting part of this line is the fact that she says she's Carol today. Sue also says Carol needs to let Jeremy go, but Jeremy isn't some other person as Sue mistakes Carol for Jeremy. I think Jeremy was the past life that Sue had, meaning in this universe, reincarnation is very, very real. 
When the woman in the very beginning says she's sitting in the only chair that someone hasn't died in, then Nigel asks how many of him there are, and she says that he's one, and that he'll always just be one. She's possibly referring to how many lives he will have. When this woman died, the faceless head was also quick to say it was an act and that she wasn't dead, possibly alluding to the fact that she could be reincarnated. Also, when Alan eats her, he immediately spits out two other life forms. Now, I don't think the twins are a reincarnation of Subtitle Lady, as we see her again at the end, but clearly there is a cycle of life happening here. When the twins die, we see them burn. With this, we can piece together that the flames we see Subtitle Lady in at the end represent the same thing the flames do with the twins, as they both represent death. And since clearly the Subtitle Lady was already dead, I think the flames represent some sort of middle spot or judging spot in between the lives a person can have. Knowing that reincarnation happens in this universe, there's still the question of why will Nigel only have one life? Now I think this is pretty obvious. Nigel isn't a good person, and I think in this universe if you aren't a good person, you won't get reincarnated. That's why I think the woman at the beginning said he would only have one life, and why she seemed almost angry with him, because she saw him for what he was. So what's Nigel's story here? I think Nigel is in prison, not just at the end of the video, but for the entire video. There's many references to prison throughout the entire video, with Alan himself even looking like a slot you would feed prisoners through. Then there's the obvious prison references. When the twins ask Nigel to get in their car and cooperate as if they were police officers, the two police officers that pick up Nigel after killing Craig, and of course, the literal prison. In the beginning, Nigel also seems to be guarded by the faceless head and seems to be answering to him in a way as if he were a prison guard. I think Nigel's story here is about a secret love affair. I think Nigel was in prison, and while being in prison, he had a wife or lover on the outside, which is represented by the mouth, although Nigel did not care for his lover. He treated them like a sex object, which I think is very clearly represented here, seeing as the mouth is quite literally used as a sex object. Also, his willingness to hand it off to Craig and trade it like its property. While in prison, Nigel met Craig and left his partner for her, and they escaped together. Nigel later realizing that Craig isn't who he thought she was, and her morals were skewed. So Nigel killed her so he could be with his lover again. This murder though leading to the police finding him and bringing him back to jail. So no, Nigel won't have another life. There will always be just one Nigel, and eventually when he dies, he will probably stay in the middle place for all of eternity. Because Nigel doesn't deserve a second chance, exactly like the lady in the beginning predicted. In short, this is a story about a very sad man who is in a really dark place in his life, but instead of attempting to be a better person, he dug himself an even deeper hole. Nigel never cared about Craig or his lover on the outside. Nigel thinks his morals are correct and that he's a better person than others, when in reality he isn't. And for this, Nigel won't get a second chance at life. Again, this amazing animation, along with many others, was made by David Firth, so if you haven't already, go check him out and support him. He makes some really amazing stuff. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you really enjoyed the analysis of Sock 6.